Hello and welcome back to Down the Tracker. Today we'll be reviewing the 50-20 between New Zealand and Australia. And New Zealand winning the series uh, 3-2. They won this game by seven wickets. It was a comfortable win in the end for them. Uh, Australia winning the toss and electing to bat first. But this pitch wasn't as slow as the last one. So they were probably 30 runs short, 20, 30 runs short. They got some good starts, I think, uh, at the beginning. Aaron Finch, 36 of 32, and Wade, 44 of 29. Ideally, they needed one of them to bat till the end, like Finch did in the last game. Uh, but even then, they, you know, they're probably expecting Maxwell Stoinis and Mitchell Marsh to step up with the bat. That unfortunately did not happen. The middle order, you know, when you get a start like that, you want your middle order to come, come out and, you know, uh, finish it off nicely probably take the target towards 170, 180, hit a few boundaries, rotate the strike. But unfortunately, they got stuck. Uh, Maxwell went for the big shot. He connected well, but it went straight to the field. Their placement was an issue. Stonis looked rusty. He hit 26 runs, but just of 26 balls. And um, he just couldn't get away. Try to get, uh, you know, he, even rotating the strike. He did rotate here and there, but you could see that he was uh, bogged down. I think New Zealand bowled uh, really well. Again, the spinners, uh, Sodhi and Santner, um, they bowled, they did an excellent job. Uh, Sodhi, uh, in particular, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, very interesting to see. He picked up three wickets, but uh, two of those wickets were of rankful tosses, like, you know, those who get deposited into the sands. Tells you two things. One thing is that the ground was a bit bigger, but more than that, like, you know, the Australian batsmen just couldn't connect, you know, on this pitch. They just, even when it was a full toss, they just couldn't connect. It wasn't their day with the bat. And um, yeah, like, you know, they probably ideally needed a 180 run score. The Saudi and Bolt, again, excellent with the ball, both picking up a couple of wickets. And, uh, you know, these wickets in regular intervals kept Australia bogged down. The, uh, they had one partnership, but they needed a, a more than that, I think. And they just couldn't get that impetus towards the end of the innings with, you know, wicket, as they kept losing wickets. But uh, if you look at the second innings, 140, it's, it's still a kind of a tricky, a tricky uh, chase because if you saw the last game, uh, England, were, uh, New Zealand were all out for like 120 odd. They couldn't chase 150, like even not even 120 odd, it was like 100 odd. So um, they needed to uh, be a bit smart in the chase and that's exactly what they were. A very uh, great move to get um, Conway to open the innings instead of Seifert. Con uh, Conway has been in great form. He's playing well and, um, you know, he anchored the innings today beautifully while G Guptil on the other end was just magnificent. His Guptil, though, when he looks down and hits those shots for six, you know he's in form. And, um, you know, again, today's he magnificent innings, 71 of 46 balls, striking at 154 and 4 6 or 7 4. So he was brilliant and great anchor by Conway. Conway made sure he was there. His strike was only 128, but um, a valuable 36, rotating the strike, kept, kept giving Guptil the strike. And he didn't really need to go for it when the other guy was because it's just, it was a modest target. So, a hundred run partnership between the two and that sealed the game right there. After that, a couple of wickets here and there uh, for Australia, but nothing to trouble New Zealand. Glenn Phillips, uh, Glenn Phillips came in and played a brilliant finishing knock, 34 of 16 deliveries, the way he was timing the ball and some brutal hits as well. One straight down the ground, he almost took off Meredith's head, but yeah, he finished off the game with two sixes in style, winning the series for New Zealand. Australia will be a bit disappointed uh, with the ball. Um, you know, um, Zampa got hit quite a bit, like he uh, 40 plus runs and two and a half overs. Agar again was economical, six runs per over. Meredith picked up a couple of wickets, slightly expensive, but Meredith in general, I think he's been the pick of the bowlers for Australia this series. Uh, he showed that he has the pace, he has variations, he can change his line length as well. I think he'll be a great bowler for Australia in all formats, to be honest, going in the future. Jai Richardson as well, really good pace. Uh, looks like an excellent find. Uh, Kane Richardson, you know, he looks a bit more composed. Uh, he uses those slower cutters, especially I think in the Indian conditions will be useful. But I think uh, a great series for both teams, you know, heading into that T20 World Cup uh, later this year. They uh, have an understanding of, you know, their composition and how they need to go about things. The, you know, also the timing suited them because this was late uh, summer in New Zealand. So the pitches were um, tiring and it was slower, uh, conducive to spin. So in India, I'll probably turn more, it'll be a bit more slower on occasions, depending. It's going to be, it probably be early of the India season. So there might be flat pitches as well, but um, it's good preparation for both these teams. Um, you know, I think both teams have a solid squad going into the T20 and it's good that they have spinners like because they will play a big role in India for sure, even in the T20 format. When it comes to fast bowlers, New Zealand, again, Bolton, Saudi um, have been brilliant. I think Jameson in the T20 format, uh, you know, disappointed them a bit, but he's a youngster. He will learn. He had a magnificent test series against Pakistan, against West Indies as well. So he will learn Jameson. Uh, you know, it's just adapting to formats. I think um, 
Sadi and Bolt can guide him. They're two excellent uh, role models for him. And uh, they have the all-rounders. They have, uh, you know, the likes of Nisham. For uh, New Zealand, I think Conway's been the find. Like, you know, he, he showed he can bat in the top of the order today, middle order. He can come in and string partnerships, counter-attack. Uh, the way he pulls even when the, uh, when the length is not that short, it just shows that he can pick the line and length up perfectly. He has the shots. He has the power, the timing. I think he's been the find for them. And if, you know, Williamson can get back into form, uh, Gupta will continue to give starts for them. It'll be really good for New Zealand. You know, it's um, uh, they have that team, they have that squad. They always go under the radar in these ICC tournaments. So looking ahead for this tournament again, they'll probably fancy themselves. Australia, on the other hand, some excellent talent. They'll probably have Warner back and Smith as well. It'll be interesting to see what they do with their fast bowling because you know, will they uh, stick with these youngsters or? you know, uh, go for the tried and tested Hazelwood strike and comments. I think it should be a balance. Um, it shouldn't just be totally experienced or totally inexperienced. Maybe, you know, mix the likes of Cummins with uh, Meredith and Richardson. Even Hazelwood can be thrown here and uh, th thrown in into the team here and there. Stark as well has the experience. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how with the, how they go about that. Uh, Ashton Ega and Zampa, I think they picked themselves uh, in the spin department. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it looks good. Uh, firepower in terms of Australia, they need Maxwell and Stoinis to uh, fire, especially going into an ICC tournament. These guys are big players. They have, uh, they can change gears at any time. So they really need uh, these guys to fire along with Finch and Warner. Finch and Warner can give them starts. The mid order needs to step up. You can't just rely on your openers. Uh, you know, New Zealand have that. They have Williamson, they have Conway, they have Glenn Phillips in the middle order as well. So I, I think Australia have the talent, but they just need to, you know, execute that on the pitch. They Ideally, they want to be more consistent. They have the talent, but these batsmen need to be more consistent in and out, you know, of games. They need to come and keep scoring. But yeah, I think overall it's been an excellent series. Um, you know, congratulations to New Zealand. It went till the end, uh, fifth test, uh, fifth T20. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't down to the wire that game, but the series overall, we saw, you know, both teams put in a great, a great fight. It's always good uh, that there's something to play for in the final T20 when it's a decider, even better. And uh, credit to New Zealand. I think they've had a great home summer. For them, it'll be very interesting to see how they adapt to different uh, conditions, because I think over the last three, four months, they've played at home and they've been uh, absolutely dominant. But the faster they can adapt to foreign conditions when they go to India for the World Cup, or if they go on tours to Australia, England, uh, if they can you know, adapt to conditions quickly, they have the talent there, they have some world-class players, they have experienced players as well. So the quicker they adapt to conditions, they'll be uh, a force to reckon with even uh, away from home because they have um, uh, players with different conditions. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And uh, yeah, I think um, that's it for this series. It's been brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us uh, throughout the series. Uh, hopefully there's more cricket to cover. So make sure you like and subscribe to this video and subscribe to our channel. And, you know, make sure you hit that notification bell for the latest cricketing updates and cricketing content. Uh, yeah, thank you so much once again. Take care and uh, have a good day.